Starboy Nathan. An artist I first met age 16 on the cusp of mainstream success with one of the biggest summer R&B anthems of 2004. How does he go from that to charges of fraud and incarceration at Belmarsh Prison? We're about to find out. Black and Grown with me, Rasquame, in conversation with Nathan. All right, so let's take it back to the original days of Nathan. How did you first get into the music industry? I was always around music, because yeah. my mum's a musician. Miss Lana G. Big up Lana G, and my dad as well. But for me personally, I would always like do kind of like shows, talent competitions, and um, Rapology was a competition that I entered. I won Rapology in 2003 and um, the prize was to win a thousand pounds, which was like the maddest thing in the world at the time, and to record your own song. And then we recorded Come Into My Room. It was one of the most requested songs on radio. And so, yeah, I was like, yeah, my dreams are coming true. I'm in Carnaby Street and I just heard them playing some of my songs. And like that summer, so the summer of 2004, that had the R&B and Lethal and Powell had everything else. So we, we made Come Into My Room. We made Round and Round. They Can't Take Me Away. Do Without My Love. So they made the majority of the Masterpiece album. In terms of like charts and numbers and stuff, it didn't do much. When, when it didn't get like um, the numbers that we kind of wanted, we was like, raw, this is, it's never gonna happen in the UK. Cause everyone keeps on saying like, this is, if you R&B don't sell over here, we should go to America, blah, blah, blah. And I think the last road of dash before we went to America was like going on like Big Brother. So pause there one second. Yeah. You, you go on Big Brother. Yeah. A reality show. Yeah. Which was mm -hmm. not the thing that most artists would have wanted to do at the time. So yeah. why did you go on Big Brother? Um, we just thought that try and expand the fan base even more to continue what we were doing mm -hmm. independently. See if, if we could get a top 20 off of the fan base that we built from going on tours, if we sing to 16 million people or whatever the numbers were at the time that X Factor got 8 million, 9 million a week, then in theory we'd be able to sell to more people. Hello, sir. what's your name? I'm Nathan Fagan Gale. Yeah. Are these people with you? People were just like, why? My tunes my don't get banged every day, but I'm not doing no X Factor fan. The public was generally kind of like a little bit confused as to why you're now. I'd say more than a little bit confused. Man ain't ending up like, not, like, like fucking me from yeah? But the, the main question was why. I feel like people just still wanted to know why you, why did you want to do it, innit? Like, why did yeah. you do it, innit? So I did a little video like to say why I went on it. What's going on, peeps? It's Starboy Nathan. I thought I should do a quick message because like a lot of people have been asking why I decided to do X Factor. I'm an independent artist, I'm not signed, I do not have a record deal. Um, everything that I've been doing for the past seven years, all of the videos has been off my own back. If I was to say this to any random person, they'd presume that this person I was speaking of must be some kind of massive star, mm. must be financially balling. Mm. What was the true financial picture at the it time? Was absolutely not financially balling. No? No, and the reason why is because we was just investing in the music to try and have it pay off. but was never like sitting on mad peas or anything like that. So at the time, nothing's really working mm. in terms of the way you want it out there. Why don't you just go and get a job? <laughs> it's a great question. I, n I never thought that, no man can't be doing that. It was more internal, it was more like what I was like going through and I was thinking like, right, nah, that's not my path, man's on this music thing, blah, blah, blah. But that has to play a part in it, thinking yeah, like it's beneath it. You have to, nah, yeah, you have man, to feel like, to exactly. Like big man. Yeah. Rare, rare, rare. I'm Nathan. Mm. Man can't see me on the low like that and all these things. Yeah, and I thought what we do go for is grown black. Yeah, definitely. Which is the reason why, like, when man got the opportunity and was like, bro, man can do, man can get a drop into your account. I was like, alright, cool. Right. So <laughs> I'm really curious as to the full story of that. Yeah. You've read a lot. Heard a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, depending on the tabloid you read or the quality of the newspaper, the headlines got worse and worse. It turns into 50 grand was snatched from these old ladies mm. to fund ISIS. Mm, yeah. I, it was kind of horrific, these headlines, what you were accused of. Yeah. So first of all, tell us what you did. All right, so let me tell you what happened then. Someone has said to me that they could put money in my account and um, I was like, all right, cool. 
I could make it look like I got paid for a show. Yeah, so you were aware this was some kind of dodgy money at the time? Absolutely. So I didn't know where it was coming from. And um, how it came on top was I was in, I was actually in America at the time. My boy calls me and was like, yo, FBI is at my house. I was like, what, what are you talking about? Anyway, so I said, yeah, yeah. So I was around the corner and I said, well, I'll just tell him to come here and that. And basically he said, you've got to go back to England. Man was like, all right, cool. So when I got back, um, there's police at the airport. You need to come with us, sir. When I got in the station, they started asking me about mad names, like mad names that I'd never heard before in it. I actually thought, okay, well, this actually might be better because I don't know what they're talking about here. And then, so they, and then I was on bail. I was on bail for like nine months or something like that. Then, they said they was charging me. R&B singer Nathan Fagan Gale has been charged by police with conspiracy to commit fraud. So what they said they was charging was receiving criminal funds. Yeah, so nothing to do with anything that was in any papers about no anything, just receiving criminal funds. So as the whole thing came out, they've realized that, okay, this guy has been on X Factor and all of this stuff. And obviously that became part of the story in itself. But the mad thing was obviously, it became public and people started hitting me up like, bro, what's going on here? Like, what, you, what happened in it? And um, I remember thinking, no, nah, I've, I've got to say something. And it's only because of uh, um, like a conversation with a couple of my brethren, it's like, bro, what can you say in it? And realistically, it's true because it's like, well, I fucked up in it, I did it. So see, when I did X Factor, it was the same thing. People worried about the perception and I felt like I had to do a video to kind of explain. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to make sure they see why and all of this stuff, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And for me, the whole perception thing was the actual, was the downfall. When you're thinking too much, you're considering too much how people are gonna take it. And I realized that that was a mistake that I kept on making. There's a lot of ways that ego, you're, you having an ego can affect you negatively. So say for instance, like it's cold outside, but you got a fresh trim and a fresh t-shirt, yeah? And you wanna go out, you want people to see the t-shirt, so you don't put a jacket on and you get cold. And then a lot of people, they probably say, oh, England's too cold, man. So they'll start blaming England or they start blaming the weather instead of blaming themselves. So, no, it was me, I was, I, it was me. I was thinking more about looking fresh or impressing someone, or per just perception in general. And I, I realized I was doing that in music. I had been doing that in music for bare long. So I feel like that's why it wasn't working. Because I feel like the most successful time that I had in music was at the beginning, because I wanted to make songs and I love music. <laughs>